Hello, I'm Brent Gardner, and this is the NRA ILA Grassroots News Minute for Friday, June 18th. Here with today's first story is correspondent Krista Cobb. Thanks, Brent. The National Rifle Association believes that any restrictions on the political speech of Americans are unconstitutional. In the past, through the courts and in Congress, the NRA has opposed any efforts to restrict the rights of its 4 million members to speak and have their voices heard on behalf of gun owners nationwide. The NRA's opposition to restrictions on political speech includes its recent letter to members of Congress expressing strong concerns about H.R. 5175, the Disclose Act. As it stood at the time of that letter, the measure would have undermined or obliterated virtually all of NRA's right to free political speech and therefore jeopardize the Second Amendment rights of every law-abiding American. And NRA's first obligation must always be to its members and the most ardent defense of firearms freedom for Americans' lawful gun owners. On June 14, 2010, Democrat leadership in the U.S. House of Representatives pledged that H.R. 5175 would be amended to exempt groups like the NRA that meet certain criteria from its onerous restrictions on political speech. As a result, and as long as that remains the case, the NRA will not be involved in the final consideration of the House bill. The NRA cannot defend the Second Amendment from the attacks we face in the local, state, federal, international, and judicial arenas without the ability to speak. We will not allow ourselves to be silenced while the national news media, politicians, and others are allowed to attack us freely. The NRA will continue to fight for its right to speak out in the defense of the Second Amendment. Any efforts to silence the political speech of NRA members will, as has been the case in the past, be met with strong opposition. And now... Back to you, Brent. Thanks, Krista. Two major meetings, possibly affecting American gun owners' rights, will continue at the United Nations in New York over the next week, and NRA will be fully and actively involved in these meetings. These meetings are also a continuation of the so-called Program of Action, adopted by the UN at a conference in 2001. Anti-gun groups saw the original Program of Action as a vehicle for UN gun bans, registration schemes, and other radical proposals. The U.S., through the efforts of then-Ambassador John Bolton, forced the removal of provisions targeting privately owned firearms. However, the U.N. still holds biennial meetings every two years to keep the program of action alive. Heavily funded anti-gun groups will again attempt to get the U.N. and its member states to target the right to arms at the meetings and anti-gun, anti-U.S. measures could well be on the table. While these meetings are a continuation of a process started years ago and scheduled to end in a four-week international conference in 2012, there is no draft treaty at this time. However, anti-gun groups see this as a means to impose worldwide gun control through the treaty process. If ratified, a treaty has the force of law in the U.S., so anti-gun groups could score major victories without going through the usual domestic political process. And while treaties do not trump the Constitution, the interpretation of the Constitution is in the hands of federal judges and justices of the U.S. Supreme Court, where the Second Amendment had only a one-vote margin of safety in the 2008 Heller decision. No pro-gun organization in the world has been more active at the U.N. in defending gun owners' rights than the NRA, which was a major force in stopping anti-gun proposals at the 2001 and 2006 conferences. The NRA is an official UN non-governmental organization and is constantly present at every important UN small arms meeting, so NRA members can rest assured that their rights are being defended in all venues, both national and international, where they're threatened. For more information on NRA's efforts in these important areas and for up-to-date legislative alerts, please visit our website at www.nraila.org.